advice on how to deal with jealous friends few of your friends are constantly trying to copy you your taste in men as well your gut feeling doesn't lie okay ma'am would you rather them not copy you and copy someone else because you're irrelevant a lot of women start having problems with this and it's, it, just, it just baffles me if you're a good example why wouldn't they copy you that's a compliment you're looking at it from the wrong perspective it's not about copying it's about they see you living your best life and they want to live their best life too. Would you rather them copy someone like Pignesia and go get the worst type of man and dress with khaki and wear bonnets out while they're in public with you? Be happy you're an influencer to your friends. That means you are the leader. You are the leader. Like on Mean Girls, you know they were always copying Regina George on Mean Girls. If someone like tried to prank her and cut out like holes on her shirt and then everybody was wearing it stay away from those friends who can't stand when you're looking or feeling good or when you're feeling yourself for instance if you whip out your phone and you're taking selfies and videos and snapchats and all of that and you peep them you peep them from your peripheral over there making little stank faces mean mugging side eyeing you any of that that's an undercover hater yeah stay away from them also for instance if you're looking in the mirror um, and you notice they're making those faces, rolling their eyes, breathing all hard, <sighs> <sighs> rolling their eyes, <laughs> ready to go, something wrong with them, all of a sudden they got a headache, all of a sudden they sick, all of a sudden they acting weird and funny, all of a sudden, stay away from them. Also, if you guys are out and about and you're receiving lots of compliments, people are complimenting you or wanting to talk to you and making the faces, getting real quiet or rolling their eyes very slickly because they think they're slick but like i said you can catch everything out of your peripheral that side eye hey pretty girl club so today's video i want to talk about the low-key jealous friends that you may have um there's one person I want to talk about specifically in mind in my personal life. These people will pretend to be your friend, but they'll be all up in your face. Sometimes they'll even throw shots at you and you'll catch it, but you're like, mm. you don't know for sure if it was a shot taken at you, but you could tell it was. It was. It's called, um, they're called microaggressions and fake friends use that a lot. They use a passive aggressive energy a lot too. They'll ask you 101 questions about your personal life, your relationship status, what you got going on in your boyfriend's life. They want to know all up. It, they want to be all up in your relationship, all up in your relationship. They will probably be the person that will be in your stories every single day. I have this one particular. I'm not going to use the word friend because she's been in my friend group for years, like my college friend group. But I've always felt like she has some type of slight towards me jealousy whatever whatever it is this girl will be the first person in my stories but she'll never like any statuses but she will be the first person all the time she's the same person that likes to start rumors about me when we was in college she's the same friend that in the friend group that will have other people going against me she'd be the one who would defend a uh, somebody who sexually assaulted me before me and she invited him over to the dorm room story time coming very shortly anytime i would accomplish something she would downplay it like when i became when i joined my uh, sorority and you know how your friends would buy you gifts and stuff when you made it and you got through you know you basically joined the sorority and she was just so she just tried to downplay it like crazy anything that i would accomplish it would be downplayed by her so this girl she i was part of a group of friends in college it was a co-ed group at least six or seven seven or eight of us right uh, we would always hang out but she was kind of the person that was in the group that would always have something to say about me and i'm like why is she always picking on me and I would always ignore her. She would just be the one there in the group that I just had to deal with because it's like, why is she always picking on me? You know what I'm saying? And she always tried to get other people to go against me with her little 
microaggressive passive aggressive side jokes about me and you know my eye shape and i would find out later like she'll be talking about my eyes all the time she's the one who there's a joke about me in college that i look like an avatar and everything and i'm like i know she started that but she always getting people to like joke on me and it's supposed to be innocent joking but it's like why is it always targeted on me and it got to a point where me and this girl because let's okay so it was me her and two other of our friends we all lived in the same dorm room it was females and um one night she invited one of her guy friends over and she's in the there's two rooms so her and another girl in one room and i'm in the other room with another girl we this is our dorm room we have a kitchen in the middle of the dorm room it's like in a mini apartment for real and um one night her f- guy friend came over and i guess he was drunk he, he was drunk and he came into my room and started messing with me and i was minding my own business and he kept messing with me and he was drunk and he kept trying to get me to do stuff to him that i didn't want to do and he ended up sexually assaulting me long story short and i told her because that was her company that what he did to me and she didn't even believe me she was actually making a joke about it and everything she didn't believe anything that i ever had to say and I w- that was my last trial with her we had a whole bunch of issues before that but that was the reason why i moved out of that dorm room and i moved into a whole different building because i couldn't stand the fact that there was this fake person in the group and i'm supposed to pretend she's not there but she's always doing shit like this to get to me and she's never taken my side but she always wants to watch my child my child was like not even one years old yet and she always wanted to watch him and i it was very weird how somebody cannot like you but still want to be all up in your face at the same time she was always up in my face asking me a million questions about my personal life this girl's always cyber stalking me online you guys gotta be careful of the fake people in your life they'll give themselves away if you feel like they're taking shots they're taking shots if you feel like they're giving you the side eye they're giving you the side eye if you feel like they just don't have your back even a little bit they don't they're looking for anything to make your life miserable they'll die they'll down downplay your dreams I remember talking about me wanting to move out here in California and do things, and she would downplay it and say, because she's from out here, too. She's from California, too, but she don't live out here. And she always be like, well, you can come live, stay with, visit me. I'm like, hell no, I do not trust you. <laughs> These are the same women that'll get you killed, throw acid in your face when you're not looking. People will smile in your face, but you got to be careful with those ones. You can sense the energy in people that don't like you. I remember my f- um, my guy friend had a wedding and we were all invited and she was there. And of course she had to keep taking shots at me while I was there to the point where I felt uncomfortable being around her and the other two. The other two, I call them the minions because they seem to follow her. They seem to follow her every move. Um, it's almost like they're being peer pressured to joke with her about me even though they're supposed to be my friends too. But I can tell she's the ringleader of it all. She's the one who really doesn't. And it's kind of this weird thing because we're in the same friend group. So I have to, I don't have to tolerate her anymore. That's why I don't even hang with none of them anymore because of her. She's the spoiled one in the group that spoiled it for everybody. I don't hang out with none of them anymore because of her energy, always negative towards me. And it seems to, Everybody seems to think stuff is so funny about me when she's joking about it. I'm like, okay, that's how y'all feel. So just don't trust these fake people. They'll give themselves away. And I know it's jealousy. I know it has to do with jealousy. She was always jealous of the guys that I would date. Because they were always good looking guys. She couldn't understand how I could pull them. Anytime I had a breakup, she was excited about that. She wanted to know a million things about what happened with that. It's just weird because the bitch is always studying me on social media. It's weird. She might as well be a guy the way she stalks me online, but she don't never like nothing that I post. So as pretty women, we got to be careful around 
people who you even think somebody is jealous of you they are if you even sense because we, we're energy we can feel other people's energy if you pay attention if you really pay attention you can really feel people's energies about how they feel about you if it's a genuine love it's a fake love you can tell and i've just been more sharp about it because you have to be sharp if you're pretty you have to be because people are looking for your downfall all of the time they'll be right in your face jealousy is something else it it concerns me when somebody is jealous of me because i know how powerful that emotion can be and somebody who isn't stable in the mind when they get jealous like my own mom is jealous of me and the way she makes me feel and she's my mom people who aren't even re- excuse me people who aren't even related to me i'm even more concerned about how they've affected me mentally i remember having i remember feeling very insecure in college and a lot of it had to do with people's gaslighting because i will always get guys i always knew i was attractive but yet still there was this insecurity in me and there was a lot of it having to go with a lot of it had to do with people like her taking shots at me trying to lower my self-esteem even more calling me avatar and all of this stuff you know and not no having at the time i had nobody really to have my back for real just people either wanting to sleep with me i was still trying to figure out who i was i was in college and everything and i didn't have anybody who really had my back like that my family not really no you know my mom's situation no so i didn't really have anybody who had my back like that and i just remember being able it was easily easy for me to succumb to gaslighting because i had nobody to tell me hey that's not who you are look in the mirror look at yourself you are beautiful and i knew i was but as a young girl you kind of have to be reminded sometimes especially if people are constantly telling you things about yourself but you know it's not true because your experience says otherwise so it's kind of this battle and i think that's where a lot of my body dysmorphia came from because body dysmorphia is you not seeing yourself how other people see you and i will always get attention and i knew she didn't like that shit either but i was like i get attention but yet i feel this way about myself and it's people trying to make you feel that way i promise if you're a young girl listening to this you feel insecure but you know you're attractive is people putting that in your brain and you can't let them get to you like as a grown woman i'm i'm recognizing it at i'm 32 years old and i'm just now starting to recognize how people really are in this you know especially when you're pretty they want you to feel bad about yourself because they feel bad about themselves and you can't feel good about yourself especially especially if you're black and pretty if you have any type of black in you the black passing exoticals like i say get the most gaslighting the most hate from people in my opinion and i've seen it i witnessed it because how dare you be pretty and black at the same time and benefit from things and i don't (laughs) how dare you that's what it feels like jealousy will get you killed if i'm not mistaken selena the singer was murdered off of jealousy i used to watch deadly women and i remember the cases it was jealousy women women that get jealous is i'm so like you gotta be careful you really do protect yourselves get some mace never go with a group of women you don't know alone even if you do know them you gotta be careful because i've seen situations where somebody thought they was friends with these group of people and they went somewhere with them and they remember that remember that case with the girl from mexico I, I think her name was um her name was Shanquella Robinson that story her when she went down to Mexico with her group of friends and ended up dead 
jealousy will get you killed you really got to be careful I, don't, I try not go anywhere with people I don't know anymore alone and even these men you got to be careful with men too they'll set you up and put you in situations so it's kind of scary um <laughs> You really have to have people to have your back. And you got to learn how to vet people. Discernment. Learn discernment. Trust your gut instincts. If something don't feel right, it's probably not right. People don't have your best interest. Microaggressions. Always notice the microaggressions. That comes from somewhere. Old women give me microaggressions all the time. The passive aggressiveness speaks volumes you've got to learn how to read passive aggressiveness in people because people who aren't direct are going to be passive with it you gotta know you gotta listen you gotta peep it will literally save your life you don't have to be pretty you don't have to be pretty to experience jealousy either if you have a man if you have a man that somebody else is that somebody else wants they will make sure you pay for that it's a female thing in general with jealousy. It's this thing, women, we compete with each other so much to the point where we will hurt each other. And if you're over a man a lot of the time, or you know what I'm saying? Or that pretty privilege that they could easily gain <laughs> by just fixing themselves up a little bit. Nobody has to be jealous of anybody. Jealousy just shows what you want that you don't have, that somebody else has that you want. But you can easily get it yourself if you work hard enough for it, if you want it that bad. You know what I'm saying? If you want the same type of man that your friend has and you don't have that type of man, look in the mirror and figure out why you don't have that type of man. What do you need to do? Do you need to build your standards up? Do you need to get rid of the man that you're with now that's lame? Um, stop being jealous of the next girl and go get you. I remember growing up studying the pretty girls when I was in middle school because I wanted to be just like them. I didn't want to replace them. <laughs> There's enough room at the table. I don't understand. the. You know what I'm saying? Unless you actually like a guy that likes her, even if that's the case. There's no reason to want to harm her. That guy's just not for you. You got to learn how to understand those things. There's a bunch of guys that I liked that, you know, I couldn't be with. And because they were with somebody else and I didn't let jealousy. You know what I'm saying? You got to be male-centered as fuck to want to hurt another female over a guy. I've had so many situations in high school where. I would be dating somebody and I'd find out he was dating somebody else and it was this whole triangle situation. But at the end of the day, I've had so many triangle situations and I was end up still being friends with the female eventually. We were even friends before that. We found out we were dating the same guy. I didn't have any hard feelings towards the girl. Even though that sometimes they would have feelings against me. I was just never the type of person that let jealousy affect how I viewed another woman because it was really the man's fault the man knows what he was doing I never blamed the other woman I was never that person but there are women like that that will blame the other woman who compete with other women and we don't have to compete with each other we got to work together because we really all we got um nobody else has our back like us the pretty girls, the exoticals especially. We really kind of stop competing with each other and work with each other. And I think we're doing a good job in this space as exoticals. We work together. We support each other. You know, the other communities don't seem to do so well with that. They just act like there's not enough room or something. There's plenty of room. Jealousy, you can't let jealousy control you because it will... And if you grow old with jealousy, you become a bitter old woman. And I've seen it, and it's ne it is terrible. I never want to be that woman. <laughs> but yeah, this is just a quick video. Um, be careful when pay attention to jealousy. Notice those signs in people who you think are your friends. 
but if you get this feeling this gut feeling you gotta listen to it and figure out what it's t- trying to tell you before it because i've seen too many cases of women getting hurt by people that they trusted and thought they were cool with and friends with and no so i had to learn how to cut people off within this last year real quick and people wondering why she don't talk to me no more i just don't trust people i gotta protect myself so it's okay to be alone sometimes you gotta take care of you that's all i really wanted to say on here let me know if you have any questions like comment subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video thank you for listening Don't let people play in your hair if you don't know them. Because jealous people will try to take your hair out. I think that's what made my mom so bitter. Because apparently somebody took her hair out when she was very young. And because of that, she just let life make her bitter and become this woman that hates her own daughter. You know what I'm saying? You can't let people. If you don't trust them, females are scandalous. Um, I just, I always had a hard time making female friends because I just never trusted females like that. I always were friends with guys, but because of that, I would get caught fast. So it was this whole thing with, you know, if you're pretty, if you hang out with guys, you're fast. If you hang out with girls you can risk getting hurt or hurt (laughs) you feel me um i don't think i ever had a female friend that i can say i still am friends with like i don't have that female friend i can come call when i'm feeling some type of way i don't have that at all i don't have that sister friend that i always wanted because females just i don't know (laughs) If they had a man, I couldn't be their friend for too long. If they weren't leveled up, I couldn't be their friend. If they were unambiguous, eventually something would come in the way of that. And it's just ridiculous. So, like, when I say this exotical space is literally the first time I ever had a real sisterhood, friendship type of thing going on, I'm so serious. It's just hard to trust me. I always felt like I didn't really fit in because I was cultured, multicultured, and I would always try to fit in with monocultural people, and it just didn't work. <laughs> I was too white or what have you. I tried to go to an HBCU and everything to try to blacken up a little bit, <laughs> but you know, it is what it is. I am who I am. I used to act hood to fit in, and I'm not. I that was when I was younger. And I realized, you know, I gotta be myself. I'm happiest when I'm myself. I'm the f- my most fullest when I'm being myself. And I'm not trying to act hood or too black to fit in. Like, no, if you don't like me, too bad. <laughs> And when I think about it now, I think people were jealous of that. Like, my multiculturalism. People can be jealous of you having multiculturalism. You know what I'm saying? Like, I lived in Hawaii, Japan. I lived in Europe, Germany, Poland. I lived all over the place. And I'm proud of that. And I I think people used to get annoyed by that. Like, I traveled the world. What can I say? So when I try to fit in with people who look like me and they think I'm weird, it's like, okay, cool. So I just try to get into where I fit in. And until this exotical space came up, you know, I didn't really feel like I fit in with anybody. I just try to make myself fit in in places because I wanted to feel accepted somewhere. So I'm just glad I have you guys. <laughs> I swear. I swear, dude.
people keep trying to demolish our space, trying to silence us, trying to expose us with all these random theories in their heads. It's like, y'all don't do that with nobody else's community. Do y'all do that with Red Pill community? Do y'all do that with black empowerment, black women empowerment spaces? Do y'all try to reveal the anonymous people over there? There's anonymous channels all over the place, but why when it comes to exoticals, we gotta be, we gotta prove ourselves. And that's just the story of our life. Like the gaslighting days are over for exoticals. I am done. We are done with the gaslighting, the silencing tactics, the humbling tactics. We don't need to be humbled because we're sharing our experiences, because we're telling the truth. We're perfectly fine being the villain in y'all stories when y'all have something to say about us. I've been listening to y'all's content for years. For years. Just listening to all of the stories that you guys have of lighter skinned women bullying y'all. We listen to it, we empathize with y'all. We call it light skinned savior if we, you know, are on y'all's side and everything. But when it comes to us, we can't have sympathy over here like why do people hate exotical so much why do y'all give us such a hard time and a lot of us have been there for y'all don't get it twisted y'all know it not all light-skinned women bullied y'all y'all know it you know someone asked me on here why do i talk about um jealousy why do i make you know videos on jealousy and stuff like that not only do i go through it i've been through it and i still go through it <clears throat> i feel like that's something we could all chime in on and talk about because also too it's relatable but i talk about it because when it comes to people around you you have to be mindful of who, of who you hang around y'all and I feel like sometimes people can be a little too nice, meaning if you have that friend, a lot of y'all have friends who's supposed to been cut off a long time ago, baby, a long time ago. And these people or that person is still around you. Yes, when people say, talk about jealousy, yes, jealousy is definitely a natural thing. It is natural. But no one talks about when jealousy starts becoming demonic. Certain things you can't play with, and I feel like jealousy is one of them. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna keep it real. A friend of mine and I were talking one night, and he told me a verse in the Bible, and he said that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. That means a person or people can do some wild shit and make some crazy ass decisions. If you look at Shanquilla Robinson, Kanika Jenkins, and Selena, what do they all have in common? All of them passed away in a hotel. If you know somebody don't like you, if you know deep down in your heart, a group of females don't like you or anybody or males that don't like you, don't go with them nowhere, nowhere. Why you thinking everything, you know, gonna be all right, I'm gonna be good. And you got all these good intentions that everything gonna be all right. And you got people who you think you're cool with trying to take your ass up out of here. I just wanna say, y'all, you can't play with everybody. If it look like a duck, it smell, if, if, if it smell like a rat, it's a rat. If it quack like a duck, it's a duck. Don't play with stuff like that. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Nobody talks about when jealousy starts becoming demonic and evil because when it comes down to jealousy, it is levels to that shit. It's definitely levels to that shit. And when somebody jealous of you, girl, they don't care about you being there for them. Mm-mm. I can tell you plenty of people I've been there for. Then help them, then been there for them, then fed them, and they kids, they child too. I, I, I can tell you so many people. They don't care. Start accepting for, for people for who they are. If they feel a way about you, sis, if they feel a way about you, bro, that's that on that. 
Go on, you need to, what them seals is it? You need to go ahead and start cutting them off. It's not healthy and it's not safe. If you're watching this video right now, a lot of y'all already know in the back of your mind who it is you need to cut off. It's not cool, it's not healthy, and it's not safe. Go ahead and start making the right decisions, y'all, because you never know what's on somebody's mind and you never know what somebody will, will do to you. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. So if a friend, someone you know, someone you're close with, starts exhibiting jealous, competitive, envious behavior, run. So I have dealt with this for most of my life you know, encountering these type of people. And it is one of the most exhausting, devastating things to deal with. And, you know, I will say there are a lot of people who will say like, oh, she was jealous of me or like hater, you know, they're being a hater or they think they have so many haters and everyone's jealous. And, you know, they do this to boost their own ego. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when you literally just feel something is off. You might not even like fully be able to put words to it. So you might ignore it, but just in your body, you feel something's not right when you're with this person. Because I'm telling you, 99% of the time, your intuition was always right. So a good way to test this is, you know, if you're in person with someone, say something really positive that happens, or just like really go off about how amazing your day was or something crazy that happens and watch their reaction. So someone who is deep in the stages of, you know, competitiveness or envy, it's gonna be written all over their face. So I personally noticed this when I bought my house. Um, you know, I had invited a ton of people over just all separately at different times to see it. I was so excited. Um, you know, it's a big deal. I'm in my 20s, so it's a huge accomplishment and it wasn't like a small house either. Um, and the difference between the people I felt supported me and those that were low key, you know, mad, jealous was so obvious. So the people that I, you know, felt were supportive and that I knew were happy for me were so excited. You know, like we were talking like decorating, like, oh my gosh, you know, how are you going to decorate this? Or like I was telling them my vision for different rooms and they were like, you know, giving feedback, like really loving it, excited, happy for me. The people that I felt were kind of sus were either A, very quiet. So, you know, one person I had showed them around and it was like almost like every room, they got quieter and quieter, just like, mm, okay, nice. And I'm like, you know, it occurred to me, I'm like, at that point, it's taking more energy for you to be quiet because you're clearly experiencing something emotionally, like it's written all over your face. It's taking more energy for you to silence yourself than it is to just say whatever it is you want to say. Another person was literally like talking over me the whole time and like flipping everything and making it about themselves. Like, oh, well, at my job, like this just happened and I just did this and I'm like, okay you know that's great but it seems like i didn't say this but you know i'm thinking like every time like i'm trying to give you the tour like you know you want to see it you're flipping it about something that happens to you making it about you and i'm like this is like one time i feel like should maybe be a little bit of my moment and you know those types of experiences they just put a damper on your accomplishments and you know for a while around certain people i would just not say like you know things i was proud of or that i had accomplished because i didn't want it to come off as bragging which is so dumb because if you think about it like what what are friends for you know you should be able to share what you are doing happily and feel like you're going to be supported and others are going to be happy for you you know never has someone said something positive that happened to them and i took it as like an attack on myself or i went into like defensive mode or i started talking about what i have blah 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 like that's a sign they they don't want the best for you but i do want to say you know we are all human it's normal to experience a little bit of envy when you know you see someone doing something you want or ex an experience that you want to have um you know that's normal so don't let a temporary blip you know really get in the way of that but really go by how you feel around this person you know do i feel like i can authentically be myself that they're going to be supportive do i feel like they're talking about me instead behind my back or like they're trying to take my moment or downplay my achievements because those are things you just shouldn't tolerate that is not fair and you don't want to be around people like that it's going to be very hard to hear sis but somebody needs to tell you it's time to let that friend go she's jealous she's a hater she doesn't want to see you win you can't tell her about your wins and you know it deep down in your gut, you know it in your stomach, that it's time to let this person go. However, you're scared you're gonna be lonely. You're scared you're not gonna have any friends. And here's the thing, she's beautiful, she got her own thing going on, she's winning in her own way, but she can't see it because she's so focused on you. And you've tried to let it go. There was one sign, two sign, three sign, four sign, and you keep ignoring the signs and i know i know y'all go way back that's your girl that's your guy that's your bestie that's your diary but it's time to let them go because if you don't let them go 
it's going to get in the way of your success. When I say get in the way, sometimes it shows up like that person sabotaging something you have going on. And then you thinking to yourself, why didn't I just cut them off when I said I would? I'm at a place in my life where I don't play with jealous people. I don't play with them. I have a lot of great things going on in my life. And I refuse for anyone <laughs> to come in between that. Something my mom always taught me was that jealousy unalives people. When a person is jealous, they will go to great lengths to make sure they see you fail. Even if that means that you are no longer here. So let that person go, baby love. You will find a new friend. It will be hard, I know. You can dwell on the memories, you can cry about it, but let it go. Two words, gatekeep everything. When you have a friend who is jealous of you, they are going to try to steal everything you do. And a lot of people are like, just stop being friends with that person. I know that case by case, that is not so simple sometimes. They might be really intertwined in your life, really intertwined in your friend group, but a lot of times you gotta just stop opening your mouth and telling them things that you are doing. And I know that that feels so like, not the right thing to do because it's your friend. You should be able to like ex tell them about the exciting things going on in your life. But these people who secretly hate you and are jealous of you, I find that they copy you all the time mm -hmm. because they want to wear your skin. You know what kills me? People whose favorite line is, oh, I got my own car, I got my own crib, I got my own everything. Why would I be jealous of you? Girl, it's everything that you don't have that's making you envy me. And we ain't even talking about the physical. It's everything that I possess spiritually that got you upset. The way that I walk with the utmost confidence as if I haven't been through anything in life. The way that I effortlessly turn heads when I walk into a room. The way that I've overcame situations that were sent to destroy me. My aura, my heart, my vibe. These are things that you cannot physically go into a store and purchase. And that's why you mad. Your resilience alone will have people questioning why what they did to you didn't break you? How can you still be so positive about everything? How can you still look at life as if every day is a beautiful new day to start over? I would never look like what I've been through. I would never treat people like what I've been through. I shine from the inside out. There's not an outfit or a necklace that I can put on to make me shine any brighter than I already do. Baby, it's in me and that's why you mad. If girls you barely know hate you for no reason, congratulations, you have something they want and they believe they can't have it. Jealousy amongst other women is something I would never be able to wrap my head around, but it is extremely common and pretty girls, I am warning you, jealous women are dangerous. Women that want something that you have, whether it's your looks, your boyfriend, your life, your essence are extremely dangerous. And this is super common, especially if you're a pretty girl, especially if you have the full package, which is a pretty girl. There is just something about a pretty girl with a pretty heart that makes jealous girls blood boil. And jealousy in women comes in many different shapes. You have the one that pretends to be your friend. You have the one that points out your things, but not you. Oh girl, yes, I love that dress, but has no comment about how you look, just how the dress looks. And I'm not saying this in every case, of course you can compliment what people are wearing, but if you have a friend that does this 24 seven, she's most likely jealous of you. You also have the woman who tries to make your life impossible when you barely know her, goes out of her way to inconvenience you and try to make your life impossible because she's jealous of your life. She's jealous of your essence. She's jealous of your beauty outward and inward. And it is all a projection of how they feel about themselves. So ladies, if any of this sounds familiar, and it can be friends, but it can also be distant family members as well, please see the signs, don't ignore the red flags, and act accordingly. I love you guys. Stay pretty. You catch it when they think you're not paying attention, but you catch it. Making the faces, huffing and puffing, rolling their eyes. All of a sudden, they're ready to go. Mm, ready to go. They don't feel good. All of a sudden, when you're getting attention. When people are showing you love, when you're getting recognized, when you're getting praised, when you look your best. Those are the same friends who won't ever compliment you, yet they compliment everyone else. Those are the same friends where on social media, they don't ever hit like on your post, yet you support them. You hit like and love on their post, you comment, you show them love, you even compliment them, but they do not reciprocate. That is an undercover hacker, secretly envious. Stay away from those friends. I find it very weird to hang around people and you secretly don't like them. 
or you're secretly envious of them. I will never understand that behavior. But let me tell you something. A friend who is secretly envious of you is a dangerous friend. Y'all remember that movie Selena? And how Selena, the lady that was her best friend, who was also um, a part of her fan club, she managed all of that. See how she ended up killing Selena? How awful, how tragic. But it was the person that was the closest to her. Beware of those secretly envious friends. And anytime you peep it, don't ever take it lightly. Jealousy is the one emotion that people admit to the least. So it's the one that you should be at, like looking for in other people the most. Because again, they're not going to be willing to admit it. So when you spot it, see it, internalize it, recognize what's going on, and then just start making some distance between you and that person. I have had this happen so many times, and I'll tell you this. Um, there's a couple things that I notice. Number one is that they'll put you on a pedestal. Number two is after they start putting you on that pedestal. Oh my gosh, I want to be like, you're so amazing. Oh my gosh, I want to be like you when I grow all that stuff, right? It goes from that to once they actually get to know you, what happens is they like having you around. They like bragging about you, bringing you around. And they like the feeling of when they bring you around with other people and people are like, oh, wow, she's so cool. Thanks for bringing her around. But the minute that people start actually appreciating you and not giving the other person credit for bringing you around, they start to get really jealous. And the reason for that is, is that they're trying to live vicariously through you and they can't. At first, they kind of get a little bit of that feeling of living vicariously through you because people are giving them props, people are giving them credit for even knowing you and bringing them around. But that doesn't last very long. And that leads to the next step where they start throwing little subs, start being shady, start throwing little weird little, you know. And then in conjunction with all of that, what you're gonna notice them start doing is they're gonna start copying the shit that you're doing too. So they'll be shady, they'll be weird, they'll be throwing all these little subs at the same fucking time, copying the way you dress, copying the way that, you know, you present yourself. It's just the little things, the way you talk, um, just, just peeping. But yeah, once you get to that stage, you don't, don't, don't wait, don't wait much longer than that because after that point, they start to really show their eyes. So, yeah. Because after that stage, that's the stage where they start talking about you making rumors up start moving really freaking weird so if you don't start canceling them by the time they start showing you that they're copying you and stuff you're in for a nightmare anger sadness guilt these are all really intense emotions but we're oftentimes more likely to admit them either in the moment or after but jealousy we do not so you need to be aware of it because it's the emotion people admit to the least, but it's an extremely intense one and it leads to people doing all kinds of stuff. So, yeah. I'm never going to understand the jealous friend energy, especially for us spiritual girlies who understand that like attracts like and like you are the people that you hang out with. So if my friends are killing it, that's a great indicator that we're all about to be killing it. If I have a friend making more money than me, I'm gonna buckle up because I know what's coming for me too. Energy transmutes throughout the group. So if you have that one friend in the group who can only be happy for y'all when she's doing better, time to make a cut. No, we're just not doing it in 2024. Because here's the thing, when someone's doing better in the group, they are actually ascending the friend group. That jealous petty ass friend is holding the group back. If we can have dating rules, I just think we can have friend rules. I started implementing these friend rules towards the mid to late 20s and it literally transformed my relationships. I went from feeling like I had very shallow friendships in my mid 20s with people who treated me like an option and just genuinely weren't happy for me to attracting the most genuine fulfilling relationships with people who like truly unconditionally love me. And I didn't know that that could happen in a friendship. All that happened after I implemented the six friendship rules. Watch out for people who are jealous of you. Yeah. Watch out for the people who are jealous of you. Watch out for the women around you who are jealous of you. Because women who are jealous of you are very vindictive. My grandmother used to tell me this story. And this is why she was very leery of allowing us to be around people, women, especially girls, who she like didn't get a good vibe from. Because 
girl let me just tell you okay so her cousin her cousin used to have this these groups of friends that she would go out with practically every weekend okay my grandma was born in 1931 that's neither here nor there so her cousin we're gonna call her cousin jamie so jamie would always go out with her group of friends her friend tiffany um bertha and uh leola all the time now tiffany who was her best friend had a boyfriend okay so jamie and tiffany they would always hang out like this so one day as jamie was getting ready for the juke joint okay tiffany came over with a wig and was like hey jamie i got this wig for you girl you know i think it'll be really cute so jamie put on the wig i'm like yeah i like this wig blah blah blah. girl so they go out to the little juke joint baby why the freak jamie head start tingling so she's just like oh my god my my head is tingling like i don't know what's going on and then all of a sudden her head started hurting like she got a massive headache and she could not understand why she had a headache she thinking dang maybe this wig that tiffany brought me a little too tight okay so as she got the headache she like okay i gotta go home i gotta go home i gotta get up out of here and then she fainted do y'all know that tiffany either put something in that wig or on the wig because baby jamie went crazy they ended up having to put her in an insane asylum okay now keep in mind jamie was gorgeous beautiful i'm talking about beautiful long indian looking hair like she like she was gorgeous because my grandmother girl her mom was half indian so it was her mom's sister daughter okay so yeah her first cousin girl jamie went crazy they had to end up cutting off all her hair baby she went into the insane asylum and that's where she died okay all because tiffany's boyfriend liked jamie and tiffany was jealous of jamie so to get her get back tiffany gave jamie a laced wig which drove jamie crazy i'm letting y'all know please please if you see that people are jealous of you if you see that these females don't really rock with you like that and you know the signs that a person is jealous of you they don't celebrate you i always want to say things like oh oh i see your little air dude always gotta put on makeup we just going to the store stuff like that those are signs of jealousy in your friendship be mindful of people like that they clear of people like that because you never know you never know what could transpire in the future you always want to keep yourself safe